Refitting a radio controlled Glasgow paddle steamer. Part 5 Boiler Works The Hydraulic Test. And the first thing to do is to partially reassemble the boiler. This piece of brass tubing that comes from the turret meets up with the water gauge, and that reminds me I need to buy a new water gauge because the original one was damaged. I'm currently using part of the original water gauge, the top fitting, to screw into this piece of brass tube, and that will allow me to tighten the brass tube into the turret. The threaded end of this brass tube that screws into the turret was given a good coat of Loctite 542. Once I tightened the fitting into place, I left it for a while, and then it was easy to just remove the water gauge part from the end. Well, that's the plan anyway, and I'm pleased to say that it worked. Once the Loctite 542 had fully cured, it was a simple job to remove the water gauge fitting. The brass tube didn't move at all. And for those of you who don't know, Loctite 542 is hydraulic sealant, it's not a retainer. If I'd used Loctite 603, then it would be really difficult to get this brass tube out of the turret if ever I wanted to. I would have to use a blowtorch to break the seal between the brass tube and the turret, and that would make a real mess of the cladding. I've had some really weird comments lately. One viewer actually told me off and said, Why are you calling this a paddle steamer? It's a paddle tugboat. Well, yes it is, but as far as I'm concerned, it has a steam engine in it and paddles. So even though it is a tugboat, it's really a paddle steamer tugboat. Sometimes I despair at the mentality of some of my viewers, who take it upon themselves to comment about really irrelevant things. Then there was an English viewer who told me off for using the word disassemble, and then went on to say there were far too many Americanisms creeping into the English language. But I've always used the term disassemble since I saw the film Short Circuit. The word dismantle doesn't really cover it, I'm disassembling, taking things apart. In this video though, I'm mainly putting things back together, so applying this viewer's logic is the word for putting things back together, remantle. If it's dismantle to take it apart, no, I think it's reassemble. Back to the job, I'm disassembling this part of the boiler which is the main steam outlet, and I'm replacing this disassembled item with a blanking plug. This is one that I made earlier in the lathe. It's a quarter by 32 threads per inch. Time for another blanking plug in the end of the brass tube, but then I thought, no, this is a silly idea. I need to fill the boiler. So almost immediately after assembling this part, I disassembled it and fitted it into the hole lower down in the boiler shell itself. And why couldn't I just leave this in the top part and let the hole in the boiler do all the venting when I filled it with water? Well, it's quite simple. I need to make sure that the water level is right to the top of the boiler. I do not want any air in there at all. The whole point of a hydraulic test is to use, in this case, water, which is not compressible. And that way, during the test, if the boiler was to fracture, then the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to get wet. There'll be no explosive decompression. This is my boiler hydraulic test rig. I made it a few years ago fill the tank with water and by pumping the handle the water is pumped into the boiler. My hydraulic test rig was calibrated at the steam workshop using a piece of sophisticated equipment that they have and it checked out okay. So I thank Simon Hudson and John Holroyd for that. Time for a bit more water I think. And then it's back to moving the handle to pump the water into the boiler. Because the boiler is vented to atmosphere there's no pressure at all. I don't really need the extension handle on the pump at this stage. I think it's time to speed this operation up. Why didn't I just use a funnel to start with? Well, there's a reason for that. It's only a small boiler, so it's not a big problem filling it with the hand pump. If I'd have used a funnel to fill the boiler with water, I would have probably got water on the bench around the boiler, and I really don't want any water in that area. I want to make sure that once I've completed the hydraulic test, everywhere around the boiler is dry. Aha, the boiler's now full of water. Time to put some Loctite 542 on the blanking plug and refit it into the end of the brass tube. And please note, I used the English word refitting. I did not use the word reassembly. All I need to do now is tighten this blanking plug into the brass tube using my Barco spanner and I'm ready for the hydraulic test. Fitted to the top of this boiler is a one-way valve and the idea of this is it's a vacuum relief valve to prevent the vacuum created once the steam disappears from sucking all the oil residue down the steam pipe back into the boiler. It has a dual function, it could also be used for filling the boiler 
once the boiler had cooled. But unfortunately this valve leaks so I've removed it and I'm fitting a blanking plug. And you will note that using a cloth I'm removing every trace of water that's come from this valve from around the boiler. And now I'm replacing the valve with a standard blanking plug. Once again the blanking plug is quarter of an inch by 32 threads per inch. In this clip I'm demonstrating how I have a tap that isolates the pump because I found that after a few years the ball valves in the pump didn't seat quite as well as they should do. So by having this valve in the circuit it allows me to lock off the pressure once it's reached the pressure that I need and in this case it needs to be 100 pounds per square inch hydraulic pressure which is twice the working pressure of 50 pounds per square inch when the boiler's running on steam. As you can see the pressure isn't dropping at all there isn't a trace of water anywhere around the boiler so therefore I can pass this boiler as being fit for service. I don't have the authority to issue test certificates on these pressure vessels. I'm just making sure it's safe for my use. I left it like this when I went down to the post office and when I came back it was still at £100 per square inch. This boiler is fully fit for purpose. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.